Let's look more closely now at logos-based rhetorical choices. A logos choice is any attempt to persuade through the reasonableness of the text, and logos choices are found whenever a writer makes an argument. Logos choices are often the most important part of a persuasive text because without reasoning, without arguments to back up ideas, rhetoric becomes just manipulation. Here's an example of a Logos choice that we've already seen from Patrick Henry's speech to the Second Virginia Convention. There in paragraph three, Henry uses a series of rhetorical questions to argue that the buildup of British military forces is a sign that King George intends to pacify the colonies through violence. This is a Logos choice because Henry is making an argument. When you write about a Logos choice, you should Identify the Logos-based rhetorical technique that's used, which in every case will be some sort of argument. Paraphrase the claim and evidence of the argument in your text evidence. Explain the Logos-based effects on the audience. And connect the choice to a Logos-based obstacle. For this unit, we are ignoring rhetorical advantages. Only focus on rhetorical obstacles in our analyses for now. In order to be able to clearly identify or label a Logos technique, it can help to know the different kinds of arguments that writers often make. Here are a series of devices or techniques that pertain to argument. Enthymeme, which is an argument comprised of a claim supported by a logical premise, which is just a statement of general truth. Sorites is a string of enthymemes, whereby the claim of one argument becomes a logical premise supporting another claim, and so on, and so on, and so on. Example is exactly what it sounds like, an ins a specific instance of something used to support a claim. Generalization, that's an argument made using multiple examples, with the intention of using specific instances to draw general conclusions about the whole group. An argument from authority is an argument which relies on the expertise of another writer. And finally, an argument through analogy is an argument supported by an analogy, that is, an argument made through a logical comparison. It can also help you when identifying logos-based techniques and the kinds of arguments you're looking at to uh, understand what the common topics of arguments are. Uh, here's a short list. Uh, a definitional argument is an argument that says that something possesses or does not possess particular qualities. A classification argument, that's an argument that says that something belongs or does not belong to a particular group. A causal argument, we've studied these. It's an argument that says that something caused, causes, or will cause, or did not cause, does not cause, or will not cause, something else to happen. An argument of benefits is an argument that says that something yielded, yields, or will yield a particular benefit. An argument of expediency argues that something was, is, or will be the most expedient way of doing something. And then finally, an ethical argument, an argument that something was, is, or will be the right thing to do from an ethics standpoint. Whenever you try to identify a Logos technique, you might try some version of these two phrases, an argument through blank or a blank argument. For example, an argument through example or an argument through analogy or a causal argument or a definitional argument. These are all different ways that you can more clearly identify the kind of argument that is within that Logos technique. Let's pause for a quick write, respond to the question you see reflectively and informally. Uh, just make sure that you respond in complete sentences. There are a couple of ways we could identify Pat Patrick Henry's argument. We could call Henry's argument a causal argument because he is claiming that something is causing something else, that the buildup of British military forces will ultimately cause uh, or result in, is perhaps better phrased, uh, the, the king uh, sort of using violence against the colonists. We could also just call this an argument through anthememe because he is supporting his claim using a logical premise. 
When you write about Logos-based effects on the audience, you always want to explain how the Logos technique is intended to either make the audience aware of something they previously did not know, teach the audience some new concept, change the audience's way of thinking about something, correct a misconception the audience might hold, or change a belief that the audience holds. Let's pause for another quick write, respond to the next question, just as you did the first. We might say that the intended effect on the audience of Patrick Henry's argument is to change the audience's way of thinking about something, because he's trying to help his opponents on this issue uh, there at the convention. He's trying to help them see that war was actually inevitable and something that couldn't be avoided, which is something that uh, many in the audience hoped could, could happen. Anytime a Logos technique is used, there must be some corresponding Logos-based obstacle. A Logos obstacle would be any condition of the rhetorical situation that necessitates a Logos choice. Some examples of Logos obstacles would be things like if the audience doesn't know anything about the subject matter, or if the audience may think differently than the writer wants them to think about something or the audience may hold a different set of beliefs, or the audience may have the wrong idea about something. Let's pause one last time for a quick write. Respond to the following question as you've done the previous two. We might say that the rhetorical obstacle Henry is trying to overcome with this argument is that his audience may think differently than he wants them to. Remember, the convention was pretty split between those uh, who were advocating for raising a militia and those who were advocating for continuing to try to find peaceful solutions. So many at the convention still believe that a peaceful agreement with the king was possible. So that is Henry's argument. Many in his audience think differently, think the opposite of what he wants them to think.